inch oil market it in terms of was not turned on. It's another Friday morning. My God, it's good to be in the presence of the Lord and to be alive. There's a songwriter that says, just being alive in the eyes of Jesus. It's a blessing. Just being alive in the eyes of Jesus. He takes care of me. And guess what? The, another important part. I know for myself that he loves me and I know for myself that he cares. It is a privilege and an honor just to be alive, to be in the land of the living. I do not take that for granted. My God, Jesus. Listen, this morning we have a very excited program. We have some, listen, we have a guest on this morning. I encourage you to share the broadcast, share the broadcast with everyone that you know, because guess what? There's something important that's about to be said in this place today that's going to be a blessing to you, a blessing for your family, and a blessing to take you in a, to the next level in every area of your life. This morning my topic is keep, when you keep pressing forward, Listen, when you keep pressing forward, listen to me, there's nothing can stop you. There's nothing, no matter what stands in your way, no matter what comes your way, no matter what obstacles you face, and when you make up in your mind that you're going to keep pressing forward, you have to see the glory of God. You have to see the things that God has in store for you. Sometimes we feel weak along the way, and we just want to give up, and we just want to throw in the towel. But this morning, if you're out there and you're having those feelings, I want to encourage you just to keep pressing forward, because guess what? What's for you? It's in the ahead of you. There's a reason why your eyes are in front of you. There's a reason why your feet are shaped to walk forward and not backward. Because God wants you to keep pressing forward because he has something great in store for you. But where is it? It's ahead of you, not behind you. The only thing you're going to look back for is to tell your story, to tell your story how you overcome. The only thing you're going to look back is on the memories of the things that you went through to encourage somebody else, to let somebody else listen. This is how I get over. And just like how God brought me over, he's able to bring you over as well. This is the only thing. But keep pressing forward. When you keep pressing forward, there's greatness in store. And this one, my guest this morning, listen, is one of my favorite person in the world. One of my favorite person. I got to say that, you know, because it's true. And this morning, he's here. He's here to bless your heart. He's here to, I, I don't even want to talk about what he's here for, because he's going to talk to you this morning. We're going to be talking to you this morning. We're going to let you know about an able God, about a mighty God. Once you keep ahead, keep pressing forward, stay forward keep going forward one of a possible favorite line to use is keep coming forward or keep pressing forward and this morning that's the topic we're using so please share the broadcast and invite somebody else to come this morning my guest is none other than elder kenroy miller yes he's a miller yep 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 so you know what that means it's going down in here this morning it's going down in here this morning and this morning we just want to say welcome welcome to pastor kenroy miller we want to say welcome to you it's a pleasure to have you on your a survival Amen. Welcome. Just thank you, my 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 beautiful my beautiful uh, uh, sister. Uh, you know, we, we 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 some people say sister in law, but yes. my sister in love. <laughs> and we just thank you. It's a privilege to be here in your presence. And uh, I love the awesome topic today. Press. Yes. Press. Right. You know, because that's just what. Uh, we're going to have to do press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling, which Amen. is in Christ Jesus. Amen. And it, it's just it's just so an interesting thing. I. I coach my son and a few um, um, athletes, track athletes, and what I encourage them to do is two things. One, you have not lost the race until it's been completed. Yes. And I encourage them, and talking about pressing is that every time you compete, mm 
Mm -hmm. Your goal is to beat yourself. Yes, yes, yes. You know, every 200 meter you run, one and a half a second faster. 40 meter run, one and a second faster. Every time you run, right? Continuing to beat yourself. Mm. Is in that way you understand as you continue to beat yourself. And it's a whole concept of pressing. Yes. As you continue to move towards that mark, continue to beat yourself, eventually you'll win the race. Amen. You Amen. may not get gold right away. Mm. You may not come first place right away. But continue every single race beating yourself. Continue pressing. And I promise you eventually, beating yourself one day is going to be first place in the race. Amen. My God, listen, that's an awesome introduction right there. Keep pressing forward. My God, beat yourself. Um, um, Elder Kenroy, tell, us, tell our viewers, I know that the persons are watching and they say, man, listen, I'm excited already. I want to know more about this person who is on this morning, about this guest this morning. Tell us a little bit more about Kenroy. We want to know all about, I mean, I've heard a lot of stories before, but I'm not going to talk. I want Pastor Kenroy to tell us all about, tell us about yourself. Yeah, Kenroy Miller, a.k.a. Nubs, <laughs> a.k.a. Laughing Bird, Laughing Boy, <laughs> a.k.a. Miller Boy. <laughs> AKA um, South Fork. <laughs> I think I have enough aliases to uh, <laughs> to um, to start my own gang. Mm. But um, you know, Kenroy Miller. Who's Kenroy Miller? I am a proud son of Levin and Joycelyn Miller. Um, one of eighteen born to her. Ooh. One of twelve that um, remained and grew up alive in the household. And uh, I'm one of nine remaining here um, on this earth. I am uh, the proud husband uh, of Shakita Miller. Amen. Uh, that's the apple of my eye, the purple carpet on my floor. <laughs> that's my Sunday morning breeze. That's God's moisture and dew uh, that falls on my leaves in the morning. And it's cool breeze that blows through my path in the hot sunny day mm. and I thank God that God has blessed us um, with four children uh, my two sons um, Sir Henry Miller and Kenroy Miller three sons uh, and Kendrick Joshua Miller mm -hmm. and my lovely daughter Leanne so grew up right there on Mini Street uh, um, 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 so um, local a Bahamian boy walking through the streets barefoot my God. Uh, you know going to the store uh, to the Chinese down the road there um, and, you know, spend most of my life um, to your mark present, mm -hmm. you know, never even understanding at one point in time that we were poor, considered poor, right. never felt poor, mm -hmm. never understood that, never knew a day of lack. Now, when I look back at what I had, first of all, what my children have, what other people have, yes. you know, I mean, realized, wow, you know, we, we were really, um, as people would, as people would identify it, yes. right? We were on the low part of the totem pole, mm. but never felt that one day of my life. Um, so, yeah, man, just proud to be here. I have sense, I guess this is, um, you know, gone ahead and get um, certifications. I've gotten my bachelor's degree in accounting and my master's degree. Um, I am currently a senior vice president uh, within Wells Fargo Bank. I've gotten my CPA and my six, certified Six Sigma Master Black Belt. Mm. Um, and I'm also a proud elder at Freedom Temple, Temple Ministries and also a part of Mount Calvary Holy Churches of America. That's yeah. kind of me in a big old nutshell. And we can get more of the details uh, in terms of what that all means yes, yes. Um, as we further get you the podcast. Amen. Amen. Listen, he has a lot under his belt. And listen, he's a miller, okay? Millers normally have a lot on And guess what? They do it all well. You know what I mean? It's not like we have stepping or we step halfway with one and the next one we you know shortcut it's all well tell us a little bit more about your life before you would have gotten into a finance before you would have gotten an, an accounting what did you do before then and tell us a little bit more about that yeah man so I, i'm going to even go back coming up to mini street as a little boy because it all play a part of what you do you know yes um and not not necessarily thinking about it and and you know the friends at home they could they could attest to it so going up to mini street even as a little boy, yes. um, I was always the one to be kind of the organizer. I was always one to be kind of the planner, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, so much so that people would, would, um, would want to have people go to the grocery store. 
Mm. And, and I would go to the grocery store for them, wow. right? Um, and so, you know, what they would do is they would start off tipping me a little something mm. as I go to the grocery store. So I started to then be able to manage that economics of it. And, mm. and I got a little crafty because some people, you all know how it go, and I, I'm confessing here. Some people, <laughs> they wouldn't tip you accordingly, at least n not to my pleasure. True. So I really tried to figure out a way, figure out math and numbers. And so I, I, was, I was good at being able to add numbers up. Mm. So, you know, everything was normally 99, 98, 95 cents. Yes. And so what I would do is, for those folks who was not playing what I call was a fair portion, I would start rounding up some items. You know, I rang up 95 cents to 97. Mm. 99 to a dollar one, mm. you know. I started rounding up some items. And so when, when the bill came, when, when the bill came, I took my, my, my cut off the top. <laughs> uh, and so I took my 50 cents, whatever the, the, the mat was off the top of that. I carried them the change of the rest and their bill. And then they were, they were happy with the product they got. They were none the wiser. What I didn't even realize, but as much as that was mischievous yes. and, 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 and wrong, I was practicing at commerce. Yes. So basically, I was practicing being the middle man. Mm. All the way back then, I was practicing. So, so you are sending me to the store. I'm the transport organization company. I'm going... <laughs> To the store and I'm taking my small cut for the delivery of the product wow. right wow. Uh, but then it also kind of uh, helped me kind of think through how to identify things and think about money and try to manage money that way all the way back then so you move on from then and of course in our household again we was poor we didn't know it but how we survive is when you get um, like somewhere around six seven grade you got a job mm -hmm. you started to make a little hustle and so I almost made a mistake and say I started at Park and Boy, but that's not where I really started. I started working for Frank Miller and, um, oh, gee, what was the, uh, oh, the, the mechanic, um, he's living in our yard. Oh, he had house. I can't remember his name right now. Andrew, 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 two master mechanics. I started working for them. So what they would do, what they would do is they would have engines that they are fixing from cars, right? And so they, they, they're the mechanics. So they're the dirty works. They'll, they'll take the engine out and rest it on the ground. Mm -hmm. And me and a couple of us, our job was to take the engine apart and clean that engine wow. for them, each part, so that, so, so that so they'll be able to have that part to put it back together the, when they're recycling the engine. Wow. So, so I start off making money doing that. Probably around about, probably around about even like, like third, fourth grade, I was doing that, especially in the summers. Mm. So... Move on from that, um, got a little um, um, job as a packing boy. Uh, Pastor Kelson helped me get my first job. At that point in time, he was the, the dairy manager mm -hmm. uh, in City Market right there on Rosetta Street. And so he helped me get my first job as a, as, as, as a packing boy right there, um, working for, uh, um, um, it was Mr. Deems um, and a few of them. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so again, was good at it, always humble, was a hustler. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. And I realized yes. that, Making people happy meant, meant making them tip, you know? And I was always that person who uh, I, I, I made a joke and, and tried to make people happy. So work, work as a packing boy, uh, I, I, I'm there all the way up to school. Uh, then once I graduated from Iron Bailey Senior High School, <laughs> Pacer for Life, go Pacers. Um, uh, graduated from, from, from Iron Bailey um, High School, and then of course, went first to work for Club Landor. Mm -hmm. So I was a waiter at Club Landor. They were a busboy at Club Landor. It has some interesting stories. I'll tell, tell, tell one quick little bit. I had an interesting um, nickname there at Club Landor. They called me Columbus. <laughs> so this is how I got that, um, that name. So I, I, I went there the first day. and I, I never worked for that kind of thing before. My, my parents tell us, when you go in places, you wait to be told what to do, yes. right? So. I, I want to work, but I don't, I don't know what I should be doing. So they would instruct me, right? So they would say, hey, Miller, go ahead and, and go get, bust them table. So I, I clean the table off, go back, then I go stand back up. They had a little, a little, a, a little steering wheel um, at Club Lando, a, a, a ship steering wheel overlooking the water. Mm -hmm. So I go stand by that steering wheel, right? And then they come back, Miller, go ahead and get some water for this person. They go run and get the water, come back, stand by the steering wheel. Miller. Running back, come out of the steering wheel. <laughs> so finally, 
Philip was, 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 was seeing you waiting there. He stopped calling me. He said, Columbus, come on over here and get, do this. Columbus, Columbus. And I say, my name ain't Columbus, man. <laughs> I'm a Kenroy. He said, no, no, you Columbus. I said, no, I'm Kenroy. He said, no, you Columbus. I said, how you figure? He said, well, only Columbus I know. Stand at the helm and watch all the workers. <laughs> watch all the labels move, 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 move around the deck. But it was in that that I learned how to not sit there and wait for instructions. Yes. When you see a need, when you see an impact, man, go ahead and do it. I don't care what they hire you for. True. I don't care if they hire you for a waiter. I don't care if they hire you for the president. If you're the president of the company and someone, I, 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 I'm someone the floor needs to get sweep but nobody there, sweep the floor. Satisfy the need. And that'll take you far I'm in, 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 I'm in your life. So I wanted to share that piece and I'm going to get through this part a little quick, more quickly for you. So, Worked there at Club Landau for some years, and then I got a job at Higgs and Johnson. And I was a messenger at that time, running up and down the street, Higgs and Johnson. Um, I went back to school. Okay. I had to call you to the Bahamas, and I, I got so much stories. <laughs> and I got to share with that too, because initially I came out of school, and I just was speaking about yesterday. And when I came out of high school, my, 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 my plan was I was going to the States for a family friends of ours. Mm. Uh, um, Jeffrey, we call him Sweet Pants. He was a, him, and, him and Mo were like brothers, friends. And we go over, over Florida. He always took care of us. Mm -hmm. And he had a little son um, as well. He had a new baby boy. And I was supposed to go to Miami uh, with, for Lauderdale and, and, and live with them and go to school. Mm -hmm. had it all, I had it all set up. Well, uh, I ain't paying much attention in high school when I was there. I was mm -hmm. busy. Being a packing boy, making, I'm, I'm, I'm make, making money. So when I come up with my 2.1 GPA and my only two GCEs, I realized that I couldn't get no college God, in America <laughs> with that. Um, you know, and, and so, so, so therefore I had to figure it out. But again, to your point, keep on pressing. Yes. So as I'm working at Higgs and Johnson, what you going to do? Well, guess what? I went and tried to get on the COB, mm -hmm. local college here. And when I um, first went to get the COB, I went and applied for the application day. Now, again, I'm, I'm a working fella. Now, that's what happens when you ain't take your time in high school. So do that for us if you can. Um, I'm a working fella. So I came to the exam day at the college. Did the math. I came five minutes late to the math exam. That five minutes late trans translated into um, an hour and ten minutes before I could take the exam. Because they had to find room with me and several others before I take the exam. Wow. 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 Did the math portion of the exam, mm. right? Then rather than having the two hours break between the math and the English portion, I had a half hour break. Wow. So now I went in the English portion, and I'm confessing, I was never good at English. So never been good at English, and only having a half hour break, I went in this exam, and they start, they start the first thing off with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a comprehension, where they read live, you got to take notes, and then get the answers down. So after about half hour of that, I said, man, this is, this is, this, I ain't doing this. I was preparing down. So never, so needless to say, I did not get accepted into the college mm -hmm. for my grades. Wow. But keep on pressing. Yes, yes. I got yes. the letter. The letter said, we regret to inform you that you are not being accepted into the program. Wow. But as I read the letter, they have to, the, they say, but if you have any questions about this, how to apply, call this number. Mm -hmm. So all I need to keep pressing. I, 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 I dial that number and call him. I say, Mom, I need, to, I need to go to school. So she say, well, let me check your records. She look at she say, well, you know what? She said, the entry level for the college is 100 on the math exam, 100 level. You scored a 132 entry wow, level on wow, the math. Wow, wow. She said, I don't know what happened to the English, but let me see what I can do for you. Mm. So they found a college prep English program I had to start at the below high school level. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and work all my way up true, right? Mm -hmm. But I eventually got in, got into the College of Bahamas for my associate's degree, um, did that, and uh, I, 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 I was able to get, uh, I was able to actually graduate from the College of my associate's degree. Wow. From that, went on to start to work for customs. Mm -hmm. uh, um, worked for customs for about seven years. Um, in between that, I had, um, you know, gone off and went, moved to Grand Bahama. There's a whole lot of stories there, too, that we ain't got time to, to cross <laughs> over. Needless to say, I came out of Grand Bahama um, with, a, 
wife and two children, <laughs> all right? And I came back here and then I had my associate's degree then, then went back to the College of Empowerment when they started their bachelor's degree program mm. and did my bachelor's degree um, in accounting, all while spending my time working for customs as a customs officer. Mm. And it's there, back in Nassau, working for customs, uh, that then I um, applied for and was able to go to do my master's degree uh, um, at the University of Georgia. Wow, my God, and that's when you keep pressing forward. Listen, yes. when you keep pressing forward, the possibilities are endless. And as, as, as El Paso Kenra began to talk about all the different things that he did and all the different things that he, you know, he could have given up. Even with the College of the Bahamas, the story of the College of the Bahamas where he was not accepted, but he made up in his mind that he's going to keep pressing forward in order to achieve his goals. And we want to know a little bit more about what brought you to the place that you are today. You know, being one of the executives, being one of the, 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 those workers at, at Wells and Fargo, we want to know more about that because, you know, we know that, you know, you were working at Customs and all that. At what point did you land this job? And at what point did you realize that you were, you know, really pressing to get the position that you, were, that you are sitting in now? Yes, absolutely, man. And so... Um so as I moved to this journey, and I, and I have several mentors that told me go to school and so on and so forth, but two, 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 two main things kind of stick uh, out that, 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 that really propelled me forward in the sign that I had to press forward yes. and then continue to, to, to get my, my um, 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 education. And, 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 and let me say this first about the U.S. Because yes. I'm going to come back to this. My intention was never to go to the U.S., not even to go to school. After I started doing what I wanted to do, when I find out what's going on in the U.S., uh -huh. I thought, right? This is a sinful nation. I'm not, hey, I stay at home. Yes. I stay, my intention was never to go over there. First of all, not even to go to school. I have to get my bachelor's degree. Oh. And then my second thing, once uh, I'm, I'm even that, was if I do go, I get what I'm going to get, and I come in right back home. Mm. So that was my intention. And that's one before I, I started talking about it, the story in your seat, man, listen to your mind. When you think you have some intention, you need to leave yourself open to God's plans yes. for your life. Amen. Because what you could see naturally, uh, um, what you could see naturally, what you could see naturally, man, guess what? Guess what? It ain't what it seems. It's good to have plans. It's great to have plans and expectations, but leave yourself open to the move of God in Amen. your life. Amen. Okay, to the story. Two things that actually propelled me. So, um, I'm going to give credit to situations. So, uh, the first one was um, uh, um, um, uh, Lincoln Strawn. It was a supervisor um, in the Bahamas Customs in Freeport, mm -hmm. Grand Bahama. And so uh, Mr. Strawn was always challenging me, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was a custom officer, and uh, you know my handwriting is bad because I'm a miller. That's what we do. <laughs> uh, and and matter of fact, I realized that because we because we fast thinkers. I realized mm -hmm. that I, I can't keep up with our brain. That's okay. So my handwriting was bad, and I just never thought that my anything documenting and writing any kind of that stuff, you know, wouldn't do me. And I was in Freeport finishing off my bachelor's, finishing my associate's degree, uh, um, 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 in Freeport at the College of the Bahamas there, and, and working for customs in Freeport there. And so you know. Um, and Mr. Sean saw me, and he started talking to me about this accounting stuff, right? I was like, yeah. So they had um, at the harbor, um, one of the, 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 the functions was like the officer who keeps the timesheets, mm -hmm. basically keep the books. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, uh, um, all the report for, 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 for the officer's travel time and that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And normally they put, you know, the more, the, 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 the more uh, uh, um, intellectual and, 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 and uh, written savvy officers yes, there. Yes, Matter of yes. fact, a lot of times they'll they, they, they have what we call a senior officer on that task doing that uh, uh, job, right? Mm. Now, of course, that job is sitting down there at the desk, right? Yes. A lot of officers, we, 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 we made a lot of money with Grand Bahama going out and doing examinations of these trailers at the port. Mm -hmm. So I want to stay on the road, on the port. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Strong saw something in me. He started talking to me. He said, Miller, you doing accounting? And he thought with a lift, what are you doing accounting? <laughs> and he say, stop talking to so stupid, this boy. He say, no, my ain't no I said, yeah. He said, my, he said, Miller, that's what I wanted to be, you know. Wow. So, so, uh, so I said, okay. Then he said, okay. So the assignment came up for duties, and I was assigned to the record desk. Wow. I said, chief, you make a mistake. No, no. 
<laughs> I called five minutes. He said, Miller, you on the desk. Mm. I said, but they gave me my hand right. He said, you can read it here, but you can put the report out there. <laughs> so he, he, he insisted that I do those reports. Mm. He saw something in me. And I'm telling you, like I said, again, all of my accounting training that I was doing at the school, keep mm -hmm. writing hard. Wow. It allowed me to have a practical application of the accounting. He moved from there and he encouraged me and Anderson Adderley to design an audit process wow. Wow. using the information they got from accounting mm -hmm. so they can use to do the bonded audits. I don't think it was today, but we designed an accounting process wow. to go in and evaluate the, 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 the audit process, uh, 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 um, the bond audit process within Grand Bahama. And, and he encouraged me to do that. And of course, when it came time for me to go and go my bachelor's degree, do a con, he was teasing me. He was like, Millie, you ain't be no CPA. Said, That's what I wanted to be. You ain't got to win to be a CPA. You know what I'm saying? But because said, go ahead. He said, no, man, you got to do what you got. He said, because if you stay here, you're going to get used to this overtime, the other, the other stuff I got, you're going to get stuck. He said, Miller, go ahead and follow your dreams. Wow. I give him credit for, for helping me see my that change. The second is experience. Yes. And I'm not going to call the officer name. But I used to do a night duty officer shift, mm -hmm. which means you go in late at night, Order your bed, you sleep overnight, you make up a fifty dollars that <laughs> night, but you do enough of those fifty dollars add up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of officers didn't want to do it, so night duty we call them. So a lot of the few of us took other people, other officers' shift. Mm -hmm. But there was an experience where I saw it was a senior officer. Mm -hmm. He was about to retire. It was night duty king, right? And he was. It was his night of retirement party. Wow. So. Another younger officer who, like me, was now coming and taking over this, this slot, another officer talked to, the, off, talked to the, the, the junior lady officer, takes, I'm going to do your shift for you. She said, well, this guy don't do it for me. She said, no, no, he's retired, man. I got it. So now the junior officer was there. That senior officer came down there after his retirement party, and he was fighting arguing to do a shift <laughs> and I say no ma I can't see myself at 70 years old yeah right fighting to work yeah. well fighting the labor work is a different thing mm -hmm. fighting the labor I, I can't see myself doing that mm -hmm. so that encouraged me to actually I actually decided no I gotta really press at that point down that um, uh, um that meant leaving a home I already had uh, uh, um, with, with, with um, my property that, is, that, that would require leaving an investment property that wow. I already had in Grand Bahama as well. Set up, you know what I'm saying, take me to the next level. But again, I was encouraged to press. Yes, yes, yes. So, came to America, still thinking I'm going to head back home. Mm. Um, I got a scholarship um, to go do my master's degree from the Rotary Ambassador. Thank you so much, Rotary. Um, that would pay enough to get my scholarship went to the University of um, Georgia and I say, man, look at here. As soon as the ink dry on that certificate, <laughs> when they signed it, I'm back on a plane heading back because I'm not staying in this place. Mm -hmm. But as God would have it, yes. a couple of things happened. The first thing happened is I met people there in Georgia and Athens that I thought was more Christian than I was. <laughs> so I was like, where did people on the TV? I had seen them before. The second thing is, I met a Georgia peach. Oh, Lord. I met the apple of my eye. <laughs> I met the bubble carpet on my floor. And I was like, sunshine. I always watch that movie. What did it say? We called home? I said, Mama, I ain't never coming back home. <laughs> so, 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 of course, I did my uh, bachelor's degree in accounting, yes. did my master's degree in accounting information systems, um, got my CPA, and of course, went on to work for um, Deloitte and Touche. Um, spent two years, two years with Lloyd and Touche. Um, went on to um, work for um, Wachovia. Mm -hmm. Came back to work for Price Waterhouse Coopers. It's interesting because Wachovia was legacy. Sorry, yes, Wachovia is legacy Wells Fargo. Mm -hmm. So went worked for Wachovia a few years. Came back worked at Price Waterhouse Coopers. Came back to work for Bank of America. Where I got a lot of my banking experience. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course. That led me to um, the job um, at Wells Fargo. But in between that, I was able to Snapchat and capture my Georgia Peach. I was able to make her my wife. I found it a good thing. Um, and then the rest is history. <laughs> hey, man, listen. They're, they're just about blushing and blushing and stealing this morning. This is awesome. Listen, an awesome testimony about coming from... He said from being poor, but didn't know they were poor. 
for being working in Wells Fargo. Um, tell us a little bit more about working in Wells Fargo and, and from your accounting um, experiences, what advice would you give to persons? Because I know that you do, you're, you're an advisor as well. What advice would you give to persons that are watching this morning who are concerned about their finances? You know, knowing that you start, when you started, when you didn't even know you started. Yes. You know, so what advice would you give to persons this morning that are watching that are concerned in reference to their finances? Yes, okay. And I got to make it clear. So, so what I'm telling you now is the experience that Kenroy Miller have, 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 have garnered, right, um, through my life experience and my experience with God and my understanding of finance, built through my whole year of life. And so these are not official recommendations from Wells Fargo at all, okay? I'm representing Kenroy Miller right now um, in what I speak. I'm also representing Mount Calvary um, and an elder at Mount Calvary as I speak here. Um, one of the key things um, that you've got to first understand, first of all, is that even though money is the root of all evil, is that money ain't evil. Amen. And so when you understand that, your first priority, I get it, I get it. It can't be that you want to get out of poverty. It can't be that you want to settle your bills. It can't be that you, that you want, to, want to live a good life and be future. Your first priority, understanding how to do, is to, is to, um, First, want to know the will of God for money in your life. Amen. Because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and all others shall be added unto you. Amen. And I promise you, I promise you, if you are seeking financial advice and counsel um, for anything other than to understand what purpose money serves in your life as far as God and your calling, you're going to fall short. Mm. Amen? Amen? So you've got to understand the purpose of money. And I'm going to make this short because I had like a, I have, I have like a, a um, 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 five, six sermon series on the use of money. Mm. But I'm going to, I, I'll capture for you. So the first thing is the understanding that God gives you money for three purposes. And I want to cancel out what he didn't give it to you for first. He did not give you money to pay off debt. Mm. And the first thing about understanding the purpose of money that I had to come to the understanding with, that he did not give me money to pay off debt. I had to understand that it is God's uh, um, um, desire that we be the lender and not the borrower. Amen. I had to understand that any debt that I was in, and I, I want to go to describing debt, so I'll share with you first, your mortgage is not a debt. I'll share with you later. But any debt that I was in was not the will of God. Amen. Any debt that I was in was me running after something that I probably was not uh, um, purpose for as yet, or mm. me being not being planning effectively and listening to the Spirit of God. Mm. Why you say that, Pastor Man? I got, I got a car note, and I got this thing, and I got the next thing. Hey, man, it ain't me. It's in the Bible, right? And again, and, uh, 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 again, and it's not that debt is a sin, but being in debt is, no, is, is, is evidence of a curse. Amen? Amen? The Bible talks about in Leviticus that those who do not follow the will of God, these are the curses that will follow them. Mm. And they will owe. So debt, the money that God give you, he did not give you to pay off debt. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about how to get out of that and how to, 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 um, to quickly start using God's money for the, for the purpose you have. Because if you're in debt, you're in debt. You got to work yourself out of it. We'll talk about that. Yes. But, it, but, it, but, it, but it has to come with the acknowledgement yes. that God didn't give me any money to pay off debt. Because it was not his will that we are in debt. Amen. His will that we are the lender and not the borrower. Amen? Amen. 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 Anyway, so three purpose. That is to live. Mm. That is to give. Mm. And that is to invest. Mm. And I'm going to flip that a little bit. I'm going to say that is to live. That is to invest. And that is to give. And the level of spiritual, I'm going to question it, spiritual maturity yes. in your finances is when uh, uh, um, you move from, because it happens when you started, 
from where you're living yes. is the biggest to where you're giving is the biggest. Mm. That's the level of spiritual maturity yes. in finances is when you move. And when you operate on the principle of God, yes. he will move. That is his desire to be the lender and not the borrower. Well, yeah. guess what, man? How much of you understand that if you have enough to lend, which comes from your investment portfolio, if you have enough to lend, if you think about the banks, and you think about the banks that the banks pay you probably, I don't know what they pay in the Bahamas. In America, they pay like about 0.1% on your savings. Mm. And the smallest loan, even a good um, high prime loan, is going to be around about 3-4%, right? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you consider the fact that they are collecting that 0.1% and, and, and then putting out at about 5%, right? As that investment bill, you have so much more income to be able to give. Amen? Amen. All right. So live, give, and invest. Well, pass and make that spiritual because you're just saying that. Okay. Um, uh, first, we're talking about Paul's letter to Timothy, right, on giving. Paul says that a man who don't take care of his own, he, uh, including those who are in his immediate household, has broken the faith yes, yes, yes. and is less than an infidel yes. or the unbeliever. Amen? Amen? So what Paul is saying, if you are not providing for your household, if you're not using the money God gives you to live and take care of your own, you are not acting like a Christian. Yes. Amen? Amen? You are acting like worse than an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So, so a portion of your money that God gives you is to live. Yes. You got to take care of your children. You got to take care of what God has given you um, to do. You got to take care of your finances. You need some, some, somewhere to live and so on and so forth. Okay? Second, is to invest, yes. right? Now, on the investing piece, I want to just just a quick story. If you think about the actual um, serving with the with the with the talent, they were written one in Luke, I think, and one in in, in Mark, I think. Mm -hmm. um, the two stories they use different number of talents. Some use five, one use ten. But the story of the talent was all about the fact that um, they they talk about how you know one got one, one got five, and yes. so on and so forth. And they talk about the one servant who actually put the money in the ground, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we'll be hard on him because we will say, Mom, well, he put the money in the ground. He can at least put it in the bank. No. See, you got to understand what he was doing in his days, right? Mm -hmm. What he was doing in his days, that they had no Wachovia or Scotia Bank or Royal, right? Yes. yes, yes. They put it was gold right it appreciate based on the time value of what's yes. trading anyway mm. they buried the money in the ground mm. they buried the gold in the ground that's why you see folks in the pirate movie looking for buried treasure <laughs> they buried the treasure they buried the money in the ground. that was a form of savings yes. right mm. now you said but why is he was wrong because the, the 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 master called him a wicked and evil servant you see, the problem was it wasn't that he didn't put the money in the bank. It was that he didn't use the money for what it was given to him for. Yes. That yes. money was given as an investment mm. for a return. Mm. Amen? Amen? And because he put it in the ground, because he put it in the bank and did not do with it with his desire, that's why he was evil. Mm. And, and the, the man tell him, you know me. You know why I give this to you. Yes. Right? Why are you putting it in the mic? Now, I'm telling you, I'm putting you all on blast. You all had an excuse before I talk to you all now, right? <laughs> now you all know you have no excuse. I promise you, you always have enough to live, invest, and to give. And the third purpose, of course, is given. Yes. And the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over, will men give unto your bosom. Yes. Amen. Amen. These three purposes are what God gave for money. Amen. Amen. And if you first understand that and then start to look at what God give you, making sure you have something in each one of those portfolio, Amen. Amen. God will bless you and you will see your increase. Amen. Glory be to God. So it's all about applying the principles of God, the word of God to our lives. 
in our finances in every area of our lives. Okay, um, do you have any other advice that you would give to persons? I mean, I know that when we spoke earlier, we talked about the um, giving money. Let, you know, I want to know. We want to know more. I, I would like you to share that with those that are viewing because for me that was very profound. And I'm just going to give you an opportunity to share to those that are watching. Yes. Okay. So I want to share two things with you. So, because you're right. How do I get through it? How do I get through it? Right. Yes. We talk about debt being the curse. Yes. Right. And so, how do I get out of it? Yes. Well, the first thing I can say again is first of all understanding that, understand that God, I allowed myself to get in the situation. Yes. Right. And, but I need your help to get out. Yes. And in the exact same way as you was a sin, and you couldn't save yourself, you can't do this. You can't get yourself out of the debt bound that you're in without the Spirit of God. It's going to take an acknowledgement that God, I'm in here, but I need your help yes. to get me out of this. Okay? I want you to confess. The first thing is, and, and, and the example that I want to give is the mom of the unjust steward. Uh, um, the Bible talks about the understood, and, and, and it said uh, on the back end that um, he, was, he was wise and he was good, mm -hmm. even being unjust. Mm -hmm. um, and the catch as to why he was good was, guess what? When he actually uh, uh, um, realized he was going to get fired, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and when he realized that he, was, he had already done wrong, mm -hmm. right? He was about to get fired. Rather than staying in peril, the Bible says he considered, he considered what he should do. Mm. And then you know what he did? He, he quantified his error. Mm. So he gathered all of the debt and figured out where he was, and then he made a plan. Mm. And that's what I'm asking you to do as the first. If I ask you and pray, ask God for forgiveness, and ask God to give you the help to move it, then the first thing you need to do is take all of your debt. And, 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 and measure them up. Write them down. Put them in an Excel spreadsheet. Write them down somewhere. Know what all your debt is. I'm going to clarify quickly. So investment is not debt. You might have money in, uh, I'm going to call this one because I know this one. You might have, you, you, you might have money in a jitney. Yeah. Or you might have money in uh, um, 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 a stock market. Or you might have money in something else that you are buying the difference between the leverage of that loan and the income that you make it, that's not debt. Mm -hmm. That is a leveraged investment. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's one clear difference. Debt is when you have consumer items. Yes. When the thing that you have, you either already have it, mm -hmm. ain't bringing no return, My and God. all you do is paying out that interest on it. Okay? Jesus. So I want to, so get all of the what I call consumer debt. Then if I all them credit card, those shopping accounts, um, all that kind of stuff. Don't, don't get me wrong now. To be debt free, and to be able to invest without leverage is great. Mm -hmm. but, but you can't jump there. That, 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 that's the next level that we will, we will talk about, uh, about using leverage to get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get all of those debts. And then what you do is start with the smallest debt. And then work out a plan and start paying off the smallest debt. Skip lunch. Uh, take take, take a, 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 a breakfast. If you normally go to guest house for breakfast, take a boiled egg for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Skip breakfast or skip lunch and start paying off that first debt. When you pay off that first debt, don't start using the money you, 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 you were spending on that. Take the extra money you was pay, you was pay that off and the money from that one, start paying off the next debt. Mm. And keep going and keep going and keep going. There's two things happening here. One, uh, you are um, 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 uh, 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 um, I'm using a principle called compounding mm. to be able to reverse that debt structure. So normally, if you, if you could check it out, that smallest debt is probably your highest interest. Yes. So you are then uh, 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 um, using that reverse compounding to then um, be able to help, help cancel the small debt faster or help you get mm. to the bigger debt. Your biggest debt is more, more secure loan that is, that is, that is of a lower rate. Yes. You, you kind of improve your, your cash flow. That's the first thing you're doing. Secondly, you are spiritually making that first step. Yes. You are spiritually... Uh, 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 um, the Bible talks about if open my speak for you, if you step by step for you, you are constantly moving yourself closer to what that spiritual reality that you speak in yes. and pray um, God for. And he will continue to give the increase on that. And I share a testimony on that because I, 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 I'm not telling you anything that this is in my head. Yes. Right? This is an experience. When I came out of, um, from Bank of America going over um, to where I'm at now, 
at Wachovia, um, 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 Wells Fargo actually, um, there was a period when I got laid off. I got laid off um, at the same time I was starting this. So this is how the devil tried to work. Mm -hmm. So but a year after I got his revelation, we got used for money, and we start paying off our debt, me, 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 me and my lovely wife, Miss Chiquita. We start paying off our debt and start paying off our credit cards and we start seeing God's progress. Yes. Uh, but a year after that, right, they, they said with me at Bank of America, uh, Bank of America things were slow. Um, um, and everything started to build. We said, man, look here, we're going to hold on to it. We're going to bring our life down even further. Because yes. that was a large salary to compensate for. Mm. We're going to bring our life even down further, and we're going to continue to push. And we had debts that we were piling up on, and one of the large ones was the $80,000 home equity line. Mm. That's a home equity line. That wasn't my mortgage. Mm. I went and got that loan to buy some stuff. So I could have cheated and say, yeah, that's the mortgage. That wasn't the mortgage. That was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. stuff I bought that for. But I was being faithful. We were being faithful. Yes. And paying off the ones that we can. And supposed to be moving, and moving, and moving. And we out of a job now, trying to continue how to pay off this, the equity line, so on and so forth. You know, uh, about two months into the layoff, I got a letter from the bank saying, hey, we got some news for you based on a federal action that's been happening, blah, 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 blah. You have been identified as a, as a, as a, um, um, a claimer in this federal class action suit wow. against this bank I'm not going to mention, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, your loan is paid in full. Wow. $80,000. Wow. 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 Paid in full. Now mm -hmm. check what they tell me, sis. They say, so you don't have to send any more money. But just bear in mind, if you choose to send any, send any more money, we'll use that to write down the loan anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but ain't that like, ain't, ain't that like Satan, right? <laughs> try, so, try, try to make, like, I'm going to be crazy enough mm -hmm. to pay a bill or a debt that God already forgiven me for, right? Mm. But again, it's the same principle. But it showed that God had already forgiven me for being in debt in the first place. Yes, yes, and yes. as I moved on and walked into it, my, 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 my faith meets sight mm. where God, the gym not only gave me the strength to pay the debt off, and the 80,000 was the biggest one of my consumer debt. My God. God took care of it. Mm. Every single piece of it, right? And, and I am persuaded it's because I started to walk by faith in the principle of it, okay? Yes. But it's one of, the, one of the kiddies. Now, once you would have walked through that, and as you build and you get to your debt cycle, now you want to talk about investing yes. your money. I ain't going to talk too much on, on, on I'm giving, uh, I'm sorry, living and giving, because that'll take us forever. But you know what you got to do to live? Pay, pay, um, pay your bills, pay your mortgage. You got to have a savings, by the way. A, a savings is a part of living. And you want to make it, I'm going to touch that a little bit. You want to make your savings as active as possible. Yes. But your savings is a part of living. So there's two type of um, funds you want to have in the bank as a savings, right? Mm -hmm. One is your, uh, I'll call it contingency funds. I won't call it an emergency funds because God take care of emergencies, right? Yes, yes. I'm talking about contingencies. A real emergency is when something happens that you couldn't predict. Mm -hmm. Something happens you couldn't predict at all, right? Uh, 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 um, 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 no matter what, God will have to take care of that. There's, there's nothing you can do about that. Mm -hmm. But hey, if you're tired of running ball, driving on the road, and it gets flat, that ain't an emergency. <laughs> That's going to happen. You can predict that. If you drive long enough, your tire going to have a flat. True, okay? True. So you need to have some money to take care of that. That ain't an emergency. That's a contingency fund. Mm. God take care of the emergency. We try to make him take care of the contingency. No, no, no. He already give you information to save money for that. But anyway, on the investment piece, the second half of your funds that you would have cash and liquid assets, because you got to have liquid assets to be able to strike in terms of investment when it comes, right? Yes. But you want to be uh, uh, mindful of how you keep that because the banks ain't really paying a whole lot of interest on that. Mm -hmm. And so what I have done, I'm not advising anybody, yes. it's what I have done. What I have done personally, if I'm going to do, is to, to get into and study this new crypto uh, um, um, currency. Because mm -hmm. it gives you more freedom and access to your liquid funds, and it acts more like an investment. Mm -hmm. Be very, uh, 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 um, um, be very um, 
patient and on point. Don't be anxious. Again, don't be trying to put money in that thing to flip it and get rich tomorrow. Mm. Again, that's not what it's all about. Again, your purpose has to be. Your purpose has to be. I just want to be in line with the use of money for God in my life, yes. knowing yes, yes, yes. that it's going to take me there. But I would recommend part of your investment folio because you normally would have cash. And normally for the crypto market, the recommendation that I would have done would keep it in a small money market account that's paying a little bit more than the regular savings account. But mm -hmm. you got to have that cash that you can get out uh, um, 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 within a day or two without, without seriously paying it. Put a portion of that. And, and my market is about 15 20% of that cash that I have to keep in that to get have access and freedom to that. What you do with your investment is to uh, then look at, first of all, where you live in and what you're doing. Mm. Your simplest investment starts with the extension on what you need to live on. So remember, you could be paying debt for this thing or you could be owning it. Mm. And ownership is an investment. So becoming a homeowner, a land owner, having something that you could have equity in, I recommend that should be your first big investment as you move towards it. Yes. Now, you can't jump from zero to there, right? I talk about the cryptocurrency. There's a lot of small things. You can have a small point of things to invest in until you get to that point whereby your, 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 uh, um, your, um, your, your currency investment get to that, that big equity. Whatever small portion that you give, put it in something mm -hmm. to invest in the return. But always look for your first biggest investment. People say home is dead money. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Mm. You got to understand this. If you think about this, if you pay in rent, mm -hmm. right? That person who won that building had to pay a mortgage. True. So if they could keep the building, repair the building, pay their mortgage, and live, off of that rent, how could anybody say a home is a dead investment? My God. Amen? Amen. No, sir. Have a foundation. That's going to help you. I talk about my home that we have in, uh, that we had in North Carolina. God used that same home. We almost lost it in foreclosure. God used that same home. We built out of foreclosure. We were able to then be able to rent that house out for a while. As we moved into our other house, and we was able to use the savings and the equity of that house to, to actually buy a home mortgage-free. Mm. Now, that's coming to the next level, right? Mm. But then God allowed us to be able to return and sell that home to pay off that mortgage oh with the savings that we could now bump in and invest. Mm. Now, guess what? It was over the course of about 10 years. But I promise you, I ain't gonna tell you how much you make on it. But <laughs> I tell you right now that the investment that we made over that, the difference between the, the, the purchase price yes. and the selling price of that house, ain't nothing I could think of we could have invested in wow. over the 10 years that could have give, given that return. Wow. Now, one thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. So I wanna encourage you as we talk about, I mean, so much, I can go on for a long time. I'm trying to squeeze down, you know, like I say again, about, about five, seven series um, I'm, I'm into, into a <laughs> half hour or so. But if I leave anything with you, if I leave anything with you, going back to understanding the purpose of money, uh, um, um, understanding the purpose of money, understanding um, God's will for your life, and keep pressing, man. Yes. Understanding this, it's not about where you are right now. It's about being consistent and being faithful. I could share with you so many stories of disappointments where God moved me from where I'm at to not. And I'm going to share this one thing with you. There is this, um, uh, this Indian guy um, um, who I met um, at Wells Fargo. Um, and uh, as he was sharing my life story, and he was like, man, how you do that? Like, how did you do that? He was looking at me and was like, man, because he looked at this, you know, I said, well, I said, it's nothing but God's grace. Yes, yes, yes. Because he's like, man, you come from an island and now you're sitting up here 
talking to executives and chief executives. You are running programs where you're trying to save the bank 800, sorry, um, 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 uh, um, 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 11 million, 800,000, mm -hmm. 60 million wow. dollars. You're trying to save the bank. You know, how did you get there from, I mean, this little, yes. this yes. little car that said you keep a foot. And I can say again, it was nothing but God's grace. Amen. Amen. Understanding the mark, allowing, allowing when things come into my life, understand that whatever even seemed tragic, yes. it was God trying to show me his will. And to not let the obstacle stop you from continuing to press. Amen. My God, listen. That was powerful. Listen to me. I could just listen to that over all day long and all day. But I know we are pressed for time this morning. But I'm just going to ask one more question before we close out, before we go into prayer. Because we want to pray for you this morning. For those that are experiencing financial situation and you believe God. I believe that there's an anointing here today that's going to, listen, change your life forever. As you keep pressing, as you keep pressing forward, there's something that, there's an anointing here that can change your situation. But there's one more question that I'm going to ask because I know that there, this is something that I've heard persons would repeat over and over again. And this question is, what advice would you give to someone who said, man, listen, my bills are $1,000 a month, but I only make $600 a month. How do I save from this? How do I, you know, I can't catch myself to pay the bills or to catch up on the bills, much as having a savings account, because I know that there's a cry and a complaint that I would hear from a lot of persons. What advice would you give to that person? Absolutely. At first, yes. And, 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 and I, I get that because folks challenge me. But you say, I'm using my baby accent now for my American folks who, 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 who are watching this. But you say, uh, you know, go out to live, give, oh, God give you money for a baby. Oh, I know about that. So, so again, I'll say this first of all. We first got out of time, we put ourselves in that. Yeah. That, 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 that actually God did not. Now, listen to what I'm saying to you. Hear this from my heart. You cannot, you cannot not use the giving and investing portion of your earnings for anything else. Mm. You cannot. So how, how do we do this? Going back to the unjust steward. That's why God loved him. He said he considered all his ways. He considered, I'm undone. I'm about to get fired. And I've done all these people wrong. What he did was he called all of his master's debtors together and he reasoned with them. Yes, yes. Let me share this with you, man. That bank, they ain't want your car. They ain't want your house. They ain't want them clothes you have. They ain't want them. <laughs> they want to get paid, right? And guess what they know? They know that, guess what? If you lose your mind or lose your job, they can't get paid. Mm. So guess what, man? Do not be afraid to consult. If you have debt, especially consumer debt, mm -hmm. and I, was, cause I did it, consumer debt that is more than uh, uh, um, you desire, consult yes. with your adversary. Call your debtors up. Explain to them where it's at. Look at here. Hey, and however you want to do it, I got, I'll say it this way. I got this portion of my money to satisfy this debt left, right? Because yes. my living is this amount, I got to do that. My investment down, I got to do that. And my giving them money. I ain't going to tell them what that is, but I'm getting the point. This is what I have to pay my debt. I got this amount of bills. These are my debts that I have, right? Yes. I need you to help me pay you. Yes, yes. Okay? I need you to either... Help me forgive some of this. I can afford to pay you. Stop the interest of this. I can afford to pay you. Or reduce the payment amount and the time some of us pay you. Because if you reduce the payment amount and you don't reduce the interest, then I can't pay you off anyway either. Mm. So consult with them. You say, listen here. My option is this. Yes, yes, yes. Either you reduce this or come get your stuff. I can't pay this. Mm. Negotiate with them. Talk with them. You will be amazed. I had, um, so you're, you're heard the debt that God saw for itself, right? Um, I had a credit card debt the same way too. And I call them and I say, listen, I know it's 18000 but I don't have 18000 yes. And I was already saving and paying down. That's why I had some savings left, mm -hmm. right? And it had all this, the 18000 was on the back fee and late fee and all this kind of stuff. The amount that I really, uh, the, 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 I, I bought it from them was maybe, I don't know, I, I'm sure about it, I can't remember, right? Was I, I'm, I'm going to say 
5,000, right? Mm -hmm. So I call him. I said, listen, your man. I've been paying you all this money for all these years already. Yes, yes. Right? I got $6,000 to cancel this debt. That's what I got. Yes. So, y'all can take the 6000 and sell the debt, or, or, y'all could do whatever you want to do because I, I can't pay it. And the stuff is gone. So, I can't even say, I'm going to give it to you back. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes, yes. Guess what, y'all? They took the $6,000. Mm. They was happy to get it. Yeah. Okay? Same thing with the house I tell you about. Mm -hmm. So, the house was in default. Uh, I applied for the, 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 the re modification loan initially and they can tell me you can't get it you can't get it i said okay well guess what i stopped paying the mortgage i ain't got it yes yes, yes. i ain't had it i was what i was doing i was doing god give me the investment in the property that i had yes, yes. and i was living mm -hmm. i ain't had it to pay it i stopped paying it okay well, you, well do what you got to do i can't pay it yes so um i called them again and try and because i'm trying to reason with them yes no 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 no. i keep keep calling them keep calling them so eventually, uh, there was the mortgage person, uh, um, and I'm calling prayer, huh? and I, you can't live with the prayer. Yes. Um, the mortgage company, um, who, what they call service the mortgage, mm -hmm. they don't own it, because what the mortgage company do is, they, they negotiate with you, yeah. right? They actually agree for the loan, right, for amount. They give you that cash, right? They start collecting the money, and then they go to an investor, and they say, hey, man, we got this person who paying twelve percent cash, right? Mm -hmm. We will offer this to you, and we'll pay you five percent mm -hmm. for you to have it, and you give us all the cash back. Wow. And they then give it to them, and so they get five percent of your twelve percent, and the servicing bank getting the other eight mm -hmm. percent for servicing it, right? So the one that was getting eight percent, they was giving me trouble, right? The actual investor bank. Call me and say, hey, 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 you ain't pay us in a long while. You ain't gonna pay us? I say, well, hey, man, I wanna pay y'all. They're not supposed to wait for closure, you know. I wanna pay y'all, but this is all the money I have to pay over. Yes, yes. They say, who's, and I, I paraphrase them. I say, who say you can't pay that? They're American, they ain't really say it like that, right? Yeah. Who say you can't pay that, right? <laughs> who say you can't pay that? They say, we sending you a contract now to pay that amount. It was $1,000 less a month. $1,000 less a month. Mm -hmm. And other people wanted me to pay. $1,000 less a month. And they rolled all of the, uh, all of the other interest, all the kind of stuff, into that package, mm -hmm. and they reduced the overall rate. Wow. So I was able to keep the house. That rate allowed me to rent it out, to keep it, so I could move on. So like I say again, consult with your adversaries, man. And you got to start and you got to pray and trust God to do it. And I promise you, if you start with believing that I am trying to be at right with God, I am trying to get to whereby I am not acting like a curse, but I'm acting like a lamb, not a borrower. So will you, you make, make that prayer and you call them in prayer and faith, negotiate with them yes. to get the payment of that debt. Because God didn't give you no money for that. Get the payment of that debt down where you can manage that and you can live, give, and invest. And then your living, sorry, your, 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 your giving, which is your seed, will, will, will breathe on your investing mm -hmm. that it will far surpass so your giving can continue to multiply. And, I'm, and I'll say this before we end here. You got to start all of this stuff. Don't work unless you're, losing, unless you're using all. And when you are using all, your desire is to be like God. Your desire is to get whereby you can give out of your abundance. Yes. And when you have that desire, man, God, you turn into a spigot for God, right? Mm. And this is a beautiful thing for a spigot. You know what I'm saying? For the yes, spigot, yes, yes. more water running out mm. than what's staying in the spigot, right? Amen. Spigot wetting up all the place. But the truth of the matter is the spigot never runs dry. Amen. Amen. My God, what an awesome program we had today. Glory be to God. Listen, I'm just encouraged. I'm encouraged by this segment today. Listen, I know that there are many of you that are going to be messaging me after the program. Listen, you could go ahead and send your message, send your questions after the program. I'm sure that Elder Kenroy will be glad to help you. And guess what? 
he's not going to charge you those fees, okay? That's for the advice. He's going to give you those advice free of cost. And this one, before we go, we're going to pray. We're going to pray because we do believe that there's some persons on this broadcast today that need prayer. We're going to pray. You heard the man of God. He said, man, listen, I came for nothing. I came from, listen, just buying people grocery and getting a little tip to be now a financial advisor, to be that person who, listen, I can tell you this is what to do, this is what you need to do and all that. And guess what? Not only that, but lining up with the scriptures, with the word of God. Listen, this is what you keep. Call, keep pressing forward because he kept pressing. Keep pressing. It was, it was never, and th this is what we can't settle. We can't settle for what we have. We just got to keep pressing, knowing that there's greater in store. Amen. And if you're watching this morning, you desire prayer. Maybe you're in some depth. Maybe you, you need, you, you know, you just need God to open up the windows of heaven. And you need God to just show you directly the way. You need to follow these principles that was mentioned in this program today. You need, you need just your eyes, your, your, your knowledge just to open some more about what God is doing in reference to your finances. In reference for you to keep pressing in God, keep pressing in the things of God and accomplishing those things that which he has set out for you. You could just put your name down in the slot. We will be more than happy. Elder Kenroy, not only is he a fan, listen, he's a man of God. God he God. is a man of God and that's what makes it so, so unique when you know God and you talk about God and you, you believe in God and the things of God and you line all, all your life up and the work up with the things of God. Amen. Marilyn McKenzie, she said, prayer for financial breakthrough. Amen. Dora Miller and family, please pray for my finances. Glory be to God. We will definitely be praying this morning. And if there's somebody else that is watching this morning, we need, we need you to pray. We Sandra Elizabeth Moxie. Amen. We need, so you see you, Moxie, this morning. Amen. We see you this morning. We believe God. And we believe God because you ask in faith this morning. Yes, Listen yes. to me because you yes. type your name there. Listen, when it comes to finances, most people don't want to know. People, that, people know that I need a breakthrough in my finances. I need a prayer for my finances. But guess what? Because you typed your name there this morning, in faith, we believe that God is going to turn your situation around. Amen. We see Chicago, Oliver, and family financial breakthrough. Amen. We believe God that God is going to do it. Amen. Just as you type your name there this morning, and believe God for the turnaround. Lazan McKenzie, we see you this morning. Amen. Virginia Moss, glory be to God. I see Mel Lewis, please for financial breakthrough and general health. Glory be to God. Mel is watching all the way from England. Glory be good to God. She always follows the program. Glory be to God. Elsa Miller, we see your name there this morning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Jesus, we believe God. Jacqueline Zanaklu and family pray for our finances. Glory be to God. We believe God this morning. And listen, if I miss your name this morning, know that it's not intentional, but because you typed your name there in faith, I believe that God is going to hear your cry this morning and I believe that he's going to turn things around on your behalf. Yvonne McPhee, we see that name there this morning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And while we're there this morning, I'm going to type my name, my husband's name, or if there's somebody out there who have the opportunity, just to type Kelson Miller and family. We're going to put that in this morning because we believe God and I believe that God is about to turn. Listen, there's no incident. Listen to me. This man of God, when, when I woke up, he came here for his brother's funeral. He, he lives in the United States. He came here for his brother's funeral. I was trying to pray and ask God, seeking God's face, as to who would be my guest this morning. When I woke up and went to the Holy Spirit said to me, listen, this is who you need to bring in this morning. I did not know where the conversation was going to go, but I believed God, and I believe that God brought him here for you this morning, for me this morning, and I believe God for the turnaround. Vanilla Van McKenzie, Vanilyn McKenzie and family, glory be to God, Sharice Darling and family, financial breakthrough, I see those names, amen. Dora Miller, she said, I need financial breakthrough, and I'm thanking God for it already, glory be to God, amen. Wendell and Naomi Lewis, glory be to God, we will definitely be praying, we will definitely be praying this morning, and we believe God, that God will do the turn around, God will do the Hallelujah. change, the breakthrough will come, and that which you have been believing God for will come to pass. Glory be to God. It will be established. Amen. And nothing can stop it because you tighten faith. God is going to do it for you. Amen. And I just type our name there. I just type Kelson Miller and family because I know that once I type his name, amen, 
I'm also included in that. Glory be to God. And Cabrian Miller, she just typed the name. She said, Cabrian Miller and fan, Family Financial Breakthrough and Unity. Glory be to God. Amen. That is so important. And Unity. I like that she says, and Unity. And someone did type our name, Kelson and Alicia Miller. Amen. And I did wear her head. And somebody else typed Kelson Miller and Family. Glory be to God. Bless be the name of the Lord. We believe God this morning that God is going to do it. For you this morning even as you tap into this program this morning you would tap into that anointing amen that anointing that will break those yokes of financial bondage in your lives this morning we believe god for that breakthrough amen for that breakthrough and listen to me what better person to bring in this morning than to pray for you to pray with you and believe god on your behalf that god will turn it around this morning listen there's so many out there that are watching this morning that that, that will even watch later on that will be believing God for a turnaround. That you, man, you're in a state right now that you don't know what to do. You don't know what direction to turn. And only God can help you. Only God can help you. And listen to me. This morning, the man of God, we're going to release him to pray. And if you would have typed your name afterwards, please know that I go back and I got the program. I will look at the names. Amen. And, and, and we will acknowledge that we see your names there. But believe you me, I believe God this morning that God is going to do it. He's going to do it. Amen. Letitia Davis. Amen. Financial breakthrough. Stability. Unity. Breakthrough. Amen. Glory be to God. We believe God on your behalf this morning that God will do it just for you. Glory be to God that God will do it. Even as the man of God prayed this morning, we're going to believe. We're going to believe God. We're going to trust God. We're going to stand on his word. We're going to stand on his promises. The word of God, the man of God, when he spoke this morning, he talked about the word of God. He talked about, I said, Levan, Levan and Levon Miller. Glory be to God. We see those names even as they come up this morning. Glory be to God. He's going to be praying. And we're going to be trusting God on your behalf this morning. Glory be to God. We're going to release the man of God to pray. You can go ahead, Pastor Miller. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And I want to encourage, to encourage you, man. This is a faith thing. This is a faith thing. And I can tell you again, money is not evil. The love of money is. And our desire, our desire for how to use money has to be tied in to wanting to see the will of God in our lives. Yes, Lord. As we pray. Father God, we thank you for this day that you have thank made. You, Jesus. We first stand out, Father God, before we ask you for anything, we come giving you praise, glory, and honor. We come committing to rejoice and to be glad in it. We come, Father God, just magnifying your name, knowing that there are none like you. We thank you, Father God, for waking us up this morning, clothing us in our right mind, giving us, Father God, the activity of our limbs, even giving us the consciousness to turn on to this podcast on this morning, Father. We thank you and we give you praise and we give you glory, knowing that there is none like you. You said if any man desire a good thing, let him ask of you. And we come to you, Father God, desiring for you, Father God, to take over our finances in our lives. We come, Father, we desiring, Father God, to be your righteousness, to be your soul and light that draw men unto you. And we understand that we can only do that, Father God, if we are walking according to your description of us even here on this earth. So we come, Father God, first repenting, Father God, for any way and any time we have abused the finances the money that you have given us father god we come first repenting of it father god knowing father god that is but for our ignorance father god and for our lack of understanding father god but you also said father god that we who have the holy spirit father god that he will provide all truth for us so we thank you father god for the holy spirit providing the knowledge and the truth of your word for us to us father god and right now in the name of jesus in the name of your son father god we thank you father thank god you, for jesus. providing the provision father god yes. the bible declares one may sow and one may reap but you give the increase father god we commit to give you glory we commit to give you joy we commit to allowing your holy spirit to speak to us we commit father god to allowing your holy spirit father god to direct us in our actions that we we should do as we move from glory to glory in our finances father god 
but we understand, Father, that our effort alone are nothing without you, Father God. In the same manner as we cannot breathe without you, Father God, our effort is fruitless without the power of your spirit and your will. And so we thank you right now, Father God, that doors are open, Father God, yes, right now for financial yes, blessing to flow Jesus. through, Father God, everyone listed, Father God, everyone in my airframe, Father God, Father God, indeed, everyone, Father God, even in this entire Nassau and in the Bahama land, we thank you right now for as they receive the truth of your word, Father God. You who provide uh, um, uh, um, comfort and protection will give them, Father God, what they need. You will allow, Father God, the money that they have for living to stretch, Father God, to pay the rent if it's due, to pay the mortgage when it's due, to pay the light bill to the water, but may the food be on the table just as you bless the five loaves and the fishes, Father God, we thank you that what you gave them, Father God, to sustain their life will be sufficient, Father God. We call a blessing, Father God, on what you gave them to invest, Father God. Whether it's putting money in that little investment account, whether it's saving the down payment for a home that they're going to mortgage, Father God, whether it's putting it, Father God, in some other investment or starting that little business, that bus service or that hair company or even investing into themselves in their education to get a better job, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you increase the effort of that. Make what you've given them sufficient for the task, Father God. And we thank you for a multiple return on their investment, Father God. We thank you, Father God, to bless the gifts that they have, Father God. Bless their giving, Father God. We understand that this is the sower, Father God. And this is the thing that gives the multiplying principle, Father God. So we pray, Father God, that you bless the hands, Father God. Increase their giving, Father God. Allow their giving, Father God, to be able to satisfy the task, whether it's for ministry, whether it's taking care of family, taking care of others, Father God. Bless their giving to be sufficient Father God, to sustain them, Father God, as you continue to increase, Father God, we understand by the power of your word that declares the righteous is not forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. Yes, and we thank you by the power of your Holy Spirit that we will no longer walk in debt. We'll no longer walk in poverty. We'll no longer walk in lack. But we will be the lender and not the borrower. Yes, we'll be Lord. the head, not the tail. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that our living will so be that our investing is so multiplied that our giving, Father God, is even more than enough. Your word declares that our investing from our giving should turn into mess, the press down, shaking together and running over. Yes. And we thank you for it thank in you, the Jesus. matchless and marvelous name of Jesus the Christ. You are not like man, yes, as you Lord. should lie. And so we thank you, Father God, thank you, Lord, not Jesus. only for the revelation of your word, yes, but Lord. for the power of application. Yes, and we thank you for your glory. We thank you for those, Father God, who is... I'm going to go on the giving side. Who is giving is going to be so much that after they're investing and they're living, that they are giving 3000 4000 yes, 5000 yes, 10000 yes, yes, dollars a month, amen, even into the sanctuary. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My God. Glory be to God. I receive, we receive that prayer in the name of Jesus. My God, what an awesome, awesome. Listen, share the broadcast. Bless somebody else. I know that there's someone else out there who needs to hear this today. They need to hear this. So share the broadcast. Even when it's over, you can continue to share. We want to take the opportunity again to say thank you so much for watching. You're a survivor. Listen, keep pressing. Keep pressing. If you do nothing else, keep pressing. Listen. If you don't have a home church, we invite you on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. sharp to visit us here at Born Again Deliverance Ministries. We are located in the Ponciana Arena on Bernard Road. Our senior pastor is none other than Apostle Kelson Henry Miller. We're here at 10 a.m. sharp on Sunday mornings. Amen. On Friday mornings, of course, it's your survival. And guess what? We are back in the sanctuary for Bible studies on Wednesday night. My God, Bible study. Listen. 
We don't want to leave when we get here. That's how good it is. And those that are growing are those that come out to Bible study. If you want to grow in the things of God, Bible study is Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. You don't want to miss it. Glory be to God. And like I always said, if you, now, now listen, most of you may know that I'm a publisher. If you have a book, if you desire to write a book, if you have a testimony that you want to put in a book form, if you have a story to tell, listen, contact me. I'll be more than happy to help you turn that dream into a reality. Amen. For all your visa application, call me. I'll be more than happy to assist you with. But I look forward to see you again next week, Friday, same time. Same place on your survival. May God continue to bless and keep you and keep pressing forward. Keep pressing. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, Jesus, thank you.